Hi, everybody. How are you today? Um, I'm very glad to be back with you. Um, today, we're going to talk about another one of the amazing animals we have here at Bucks County Audubon. Um, today, we'll be talking about eastern box turtles. And let me find this beautiful lady right here. Can everybody see her? This is Sugar. She is one of our box turtles. We have uh, three that live here with us. Um, and she is, is the least shy of all of them. You can see she's kicking away, trying to get free right now. And she is um, really, really good with, with people. So box turtles, let's talk a little bit about those. This is Sugar again, and she's a girl. And I'll tell you how we know that um, in a little bit. We'll get to how we, we can identify who they are and what they are. Um, in a few minutes. Um, now, like I said, she's a box turtle, also known as a land turtle. She is a turtle and not a tortoise. Um, there is a distinction there. And they are, um, she belongs to what's called a subspecies of box turtle, which is, as I said, an eastern box turtle. Now, imagine an animal, you know, like you and me, uh, like other things, birds, uh, spiders, turtles, lizards, whatever. Um, they belong to, like, I'm sure you may have heard of a family tree, where your family um, can start off as, as roots in a tree trunk, and, and then the branches, they spread around. And before long, you know, the branches spread out, and they have even more pieces coming off of them. So imagine turtles being one of those main branches there. So if you can imagine that, as turtles evolve, as they get used to living in different places, they start to change to meet the needs of their, you know, the needs they have in their environment. Um, at one point, turtles lived in the water perhaps, and then they started hanging out more on land. Maybe their water source dried up and they evolved and they started living on land. Their legs changed, things about them changed. Um, and that's where we get land turtles from. Then you have the, the branch that has land turtles, it grows other branches to help suit the, the specific animal's need. And that's how we have this lady right here, our Eastern box turtle. At some point in time, her needs were met and she became something else. That's what a subspecies is. So her subspecies, the Eastern box turtle is found, where do you think? Mostly in the Eastern United States. Uh, she can, they can be found from Maine all the way down to Florida. Um, they can be found as far west as Michigan, even out as far as Texas and Kansas, they've been found at times. Um, and what they are, they, like I said, they are a terrestrial turtle. They live on the ground. They love forests, especially the forests that we have uh, kind of are around here where it, it, it's a different, there are a variety of trees. Um, they like living in areas like that where they have a lot that they can live with. Um, Sometimes they work their way into open fields, prairies, and meadows um, where they can wander around on their own. Now, being that they like the Eastern United States, you know, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people who live here. So when I was a kid, especially, I can remember finding a lot of these. Um, I used to find them pretty regularly in the spring and often in the summer as well. And we don't see them as much right now. Um, people have really moved into the areas where they live. Um, and that ha has drastically cut down on the numbers uh, of, of box turtles there are. Also because of, um, you know, they, they like, they're slow animals, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a turtle. It's a cross in the road, you know, that's really dangerous for them when it comes to cars and things. But enough of that. Let's not get into that. Let's get into talking about what a beautiful animal she is here. So um, let's see. So she's, she's active, huh? She really wants to get moving. Well, she likes it best when I can hold her like this. You see how I have her? I have her like that with my hands down. That way her feet can both touch the ground. She feels safer this way. She's not worried about going anywhere. She's not worried about me dropping her or anything like that. Now, what's the first thing you notice about her? You probably notice this shell, huh? See this big dome shell there? Look at all the great colors in it. 
that. Do you see those colors? Flares are amazing. Now, why do you think she has, um, well, first let's get on with the, with the shell. So the shell is domed and it's nice and hard. You hear that? I can kind of tap on it. She probably doesn't like that so much. She's probably like, why are you banging on me? Now her shell's made out of specialized foam. So it grows out of her body, out of her back, and it's a specialized bone. And then you look at it, it's got the shine on it and everything. And that's made out of a material called keratin. And keratin is the same type of material that is in your fingernails. So that helps protect her and keep her safe. Now, one interesting thing, you can rub her and she feels it. So if you rub your fingernail, you know, kind of like how I'm doing there, your finger to your thumb and you can feel that, so can they, they can feel it too. And one thing that I've seen that turtles really like is to get brushed with things. They love getting brushed with toothbrushes and other kinds of brushes like that. It feels good to their back. It's like getting a good back scratching. Um, but the shell is there to protect her. Now, and it's called a carapace. This back piece here, this is all the top part is called a carapace. And it grows out of her back. And then out of her belly is the bottom part here. And what it is, it is called a plastron. And the plastron, you notice right here, you see this spot there? That's right there on her and she's got one back here too. Now it's hinged. That means that it's kind of like a door, you know, a door is on hinges. And what that allows for this turtle to do, box turtles specifically, they're able to totally seal up their body when there's danger. So if I was something and I was sniffing around at her, I was a dog or something, and she thought that her life was in danger, she could pull her legs and her arms and her head all the way inside. And this little flap right here, it could close all the way up and seal her tight where nothing could get to her. And that is how they protect themselves. So she could seal up, nothing could get in, it could knock her around a bit, it'd flip her over, but it wouldn't get very far with her. So let's take a look at the next thing that's cool about her. She's got these legs. You see these legs here? Let's see if she'll cooperate. Let's show off your legs. Will you let me show off your legs a little bit? No? There, look at those claws. You see those claws? Look at that. What do you think they're used for? Claws like that are used for digging. She's a land turtle, so she digs a lot. She likes to be able to pull herself up hills and things. So she's got those claws. And that hand, and if I could get this hand, if she'd cooperate here, and she's not doing a very good job of it, you would see that she has, let's see here. Come on, girly. She has five. Count them. One, two, three, four, five claws there. Five fingers, just like you and me. And she uses those to help scrape herself along, dig for food, dig holes when she needs shelter. And then here on the back, look. Uh, come on, show off your back here. On her back, she's got four. Sometimes they only have three, depending on uh, you know their species. They don't need them as much. But what they use those claws for is to help dig holes for shelter. They help dig themselves down uh, in the winter time when they're going to hibernate. Uh, they will dig a small, you know, small enough hole to cover themselves up so that they can seal up and, and sleep in through the winter. Now, these guys are not swimmers. Um, if you notice, you see she's got claws. She's got a little bit of webbing in there, but, but not, a, not a much. Our, our turtles that we have in our tanks here, our aquatic turtles, they, they'll have webbed fingers. You know, that, that's kind of like a paddle that lets them swim. Uh, she doesn't have that because she's always on the ground. So and I wish I could get you. See, look at that arm. See how it's kind of muscular, muscular like that? It's more like a tree trunk. And that's so that they can absorb all the weight of her shell and help her walk along the ground. It's made more for design like an elephant's is. Think of an elephant's legs. Her legs are big and round and thick like a tree trunk and they're designed so that they can absorb all that weight of the elephant. And that's what land turtles and tortoises especially are like. They have different uh, designed legs. Now look at her back legs. So you see them? They're a little bit longer. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they're different like this? Well, they're a little bit different because see how they're shaped? They dig with those. They get backwards and they dig and they work themselves down. And when it's time for her to lay eggs, she'll start digging a hole in the ground that she gets her legs in and she scoops the soil out. She gets in and she scoops and pulls it and scoops and pulls it. 
And uh, it's neat because you'll make like a little chamber, but that's what these legs, they're designed for that. They're designed for pushing off and for digging for her shells. Now check, or for her eggs rather. Now check this out. Look. Huh. She's got a little cute tail there. You see that? Cute little tail. So there she goes. So let's go back to her shell and her colors. Dig those colors. Those colors are so cool. See how they're browns and yellows? A little bit of orange in there. Each turtle can vary. Each turtle can have, they're mostly, the, the, the um, fox turtles are going to be mostly this color, but there'll be different variances. They'll have different shades of brown, different shades of yellow and orange. Why do you think that is? Why do you think somebody like this would need to have those colors? Camouflage. Camouflage is the answer. When she's on the forest floor, she's going to look just like the leaves that are on the ground around her. She'll look just like all the brown and yellow leaves that have fallen. And chances are you could walk right over her. And unless she moved or you had a keen eye or you kicked her, you wouldn't know she was there. So they're able to hide really, really, really well. And plus with this big domed shell that she has there, that nice uh, shell, when she's sitting and she's hiding, she could look just like a rock. You'd walk right by her and never know it. She would be right there. So let's look at her face a little bit. See that face there? Oh, look at that face. She's a cutie. Look at that long, long neck reaching out there and looking. Now, if you look, and let me see if I can get the lighting just right for this. On this side of her head, right before where my finger is touching, there's a little round circle, a little divot there. That is called her tympanic membrane. In other words, that's her ear. That's where she listens from. It's right there. And then if you look at her eyes, you see those eyes? See, they're kind of a brownish color. See, they're kind of a brownish color there. That, my friends, is how we know that she's a girl. She has brownish eyes. They got a little bit of orange in there. Let's clean this off. You got something on the side of your face, sweetheart. She has that also. You'll see that on her shell here, it's a little bit concave. There's a little dip right there. That kind of comes in a little bit. I'll grab her, her buddy in a minute and I'll show you how different that is. That also lets us know there's that little concave there that seals her off and we can tell that she's there. Let's get one more good look at Sugar. You see Sugar? Thank you, sweetheart. Now this guy. Hey Robert, can I interrupt a second? Sure. We've got a bunch Absolutely. of questions about about the shell. First off, we have a couple questions. You answered this one that she does in fact lay eggs, so that's a good one. Um, yes. They want to. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, um, and they want to know, let's see, where did I lose? I lost it. Um, why do they have names for the different parts of their shell? Why do they have different names? Well, because that helps scientists identify what part it is. If you were saying, oh, if you're a scientist, say you're in the field and you're, um, you're, you're a scientist or, or say you're a veterinarian. And you're a veterinarian and uh, you need to do something. You, someone brings you a turtle and they say, hey, um, you know, I have a turtle and its shell is broken. And the vet would say, well, what part of the shell is broken? You say, oh, well, the bottom, the top. Well, what they use, they use um, different scientific terms for things. Just like you, you have different scientific terms for the parts of your body that you don't use every day. Um, you know, you're, you're, Let's see, uh, different things, you, you know, you always have your bones, they all have different names that we don't always use. So this is an example of that. So it's a shell, which is what it is, but the shell comes in two pieces. You've got the bottom and the top. So to help scientists identify what part of the shell they found or they're working with or is damaged or um, that they're studying, they make these words up. So we have carapace, which is the back covering of it. And we have the plastron, which is the bottom. And look, you can see right there, there's a line. That's where that hinge is in the front. And she can seal that up. Very cool. They also wanted to know again about their coloring. And you touched on this briefly, but you wanna talk again, just why they have all the different colors? So all the different colors are camouflage. Um, since these guys are ground dwellers, since they live on the ground and it doesn't, have, well, here, this is an example. So me and my shirt. My shirt's a brown shirt. 
and it's got a bunch of lines on it. And look at her when she's against my shirt. You can see the yellows and the oranges, but it's hard to see her against those browns. Now look at her against the background when it's more of a white, when it's just our natural background. See that? You can pick up on her real easy. So if you were to be in the woods, what color are leaves when they fall off of trees? When the, tree, when the leaves are on the ground, they turn brown, they get old brown, yellow, orange, things like that. She can get right in there, not to mention the different colors of dirt. You know, dirt's not always just one color of brown, is it? It's different colors. Um, if she were around rocks, when you find rocks on the ground, especially like what we have here in our woods, they tend to be different colors. She can get right in there and hide and you would never see her. So it's all about camouflage. It's all about her being able to hide from predators, all about her being able to keep safe. Um, and when you think about it, think about when they're hibernating. So they're, they're a reptile. So every, um, every winter when it gets too cold they, and they start running out of a food source, they need to hibernate. They need to shut their bodies down. Um, and that helps them, um, you know, they, they, they shut down, they're able to slow their heartbeat way down and they can sleep through the winter. They go into just a mode where it's almost like they're, they're, they're dead in a way. So when they're like that, they're not gonna wake right up, right? So if something comes snooping around and, sniffes and is sniffing, looking for something to eat, um, if it just sees them and they're sealed up and they look like a rock, they're not gonna pay attention to them as much. Um, so it, it helps keep them hidden. Excellent, okay, they have one more question and then we can move okay. on. Okay, how long would it take for a predator to break into a turtle shell? Oh, I don't have a direct answer for that. Probably a long time, depending on the predator. Um, a lot of times predators, unless they're super, super curious, um, they'll probably give up. Um, when they're trying to get in, and if it's, if it's sealed and it's locked up, those muscles are gonna hold that shell closed real tight. Sooner or later, they're gonna get bored, unless it's a very, very curious and determined animal. If it happened to be like a, maybe a dog or a coyote, um, they'd have to work really, really, really hard to get in there. Um, you know, if you had something different, like if it was in the south where there are crocodile or alligators rather, an alligator could probably crack it open with a couple bites. They have really, really strong teeth. Um, you know, their, their shells are strong. Sometimes these guys even survive being hit by a car. Cars can drive over them, it cracks their shells, and if we're lucky enough and we can get them to a, um, a, a, a vet in time, a vet can save their lives. I've seen where um, box turtles have been run over and their shells have been crushed. I've seen where they've been hit by lawnmowers and their shells have been damaged. And, and um, just like any a bone in your body, it can be mended if we're lucky. Um, I've seen uh, vets where they've had them and, and they've had uh, used bolts and, and Legos and different things to help hold the, the shell together and then they'll super glue them or use a special kind of uh, cement to help seal that and then eventually the shell just like a bone would uh, fuses back together all on its own so they're they're pretty tough they're 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 super tough shells plus like i said they've got this extra protection they have like this fingernail protection on the outside of it and that even helps uh even more when it comes to protecting them all right any, do we have any other questions right now? None? Okay, so Good. let's get back to this. Remember? So there we go. So remember I was telling you about her eyes? Notice those eyes. Brown, brown, brown eyes. And this little dip in her, her shell right here. I don't know if you can notice that as much, but she does. She has a little dip right there. Actually, right here you can see it better. See that? Just dips right down. So I'm gonna pull her buddy out. And this is cinnamon. And cinnamon is not as friendly as sugar. And you can see he's closed up pretty tight. Look at that. He's peeking out a little bit. He wants to know what's going on. But you see that? He's almost closed tight. I'm gonna to touch his, get in there and touch that a little bit. Now look at it. Now it's closing up even more. See that? He's sealing up. Let's check the back side of it up. He's almost sealed up in the back. You can barely see his feet. He's got his tail whipped around. And let's see if I can get him to come out and peek. There, look at that face. Look at that face. You notice how different? Oh, let me put my hands underneath him so he feels safe too. Look at that. 
Go on, look out. Get your head out of there. See, he's different. Notice how lighter in color he is. He's quite a bit lighter than, than Sugar. And can you see his eyes? Are his eyes coming out enough yet? Notice the color of his eyes. Let's see. Come on and peek, dude. He's got reddish orange eyes. Look at those. Aren't they gorgeous? And that's how we can tell that it is a male. For whatever reason, males in the in uh, male box turtles, their eyes are red to orange. And that's how we can tell that this guy is a boy. See that? Look at that red eye. And he's quite a bit smaller than, than sugar also. They don't get much bigger than this. And the wild, a lot of times they'll be even smaller. In captivity, they can get to be a bit bigger. They usually, you know, they can grow anywhere from five, four and a half, five, six, seven inches long. Um, they, they're not real big turtles. They don't, and he's got the same, oh, now he's getting busy. He's got the same kind of feet. You see those feet? And there's his nails. Look at that. He almost looks like he's like a yellowy white color. Look at that orange there. You're, you're a handsome guy. You should be more. Look at that eye. Look at that eye. That's gorgeous. Yeah, you're showing it off. So here, remember with um, sugar too, her backside kind of sloped down. It, it had like a, a, a dip to it. Notice how his flares out. It's like an old helmet or something. It kind of comes out. All the way around his does. Look at here in the back too. See that? It's kind of more helmet shaped than hers is. Where hers is more like a dome, like it's a, like it's an actual rock. His has a different shape to it, and that's just you know that just shows that they are, are are slightly different. Notice too this shape right here. See in here how his plastron? Look at that. It's concave, is what that's what we call that. It's kind of rounded on the inside too. So there are different things. And there's his, his hinge right there. Yeah, you see that? He's peeking out. He's getting to be a little more friendly. So you're probably wondering what these guys eat. Well, in the wild, they would, they're, they're pretty opportunistic um, omnivores. Now, what's an omnivore? Um, if you know, that, that's real great. I'm going to tell you, though, an omnivore is something that eats both plants and um, meat, essentially. So in the wild, they would take, the, if anything they could catch, uh, they, would, they might eat. They typically like to eat berries and grasses and weeds and leaves and things. But if there happens to be a snail or a slug or earthworm mixed in, sure, they'll eat those too. Um, they will eat beetles, um, moths, Anything that, that it's small enough to fit into their mouths that might be uh, good for them to try out. Uh, here we feed them pretty much the same meal that we feed, feed Sheila. If you tuned in Friday or last week, I showed you a little bit of what we feed Sheila. We feed her some, some lettuce, uh, salad that's chopped up. Uh, well, with them, we chop it up real fine. So they get lettuce and berries. And with them, we, since they do get more, in the wild, they get protein from, from animals they may eat, uh, we give them a little bit of chicken. Just a little bit of roast chicken gets chopped up real, real fine and goes in with their, their food, gets mixed in with them, and that gives them protein that they would normally get from crickets and worms and caterpillars and things. Um, and we feed them. Now, a real special thing, and we were talking about boys and girls, and someone mentioned something, I think, about uh, eggs. Can you grab that for me, please, folks? I'll show you something special that we had today. So this morning, that's something. Look, so this morning, we got lucky, and just a little while ago, um, Sugar was in her, her bath. So what we have, we have her in, a, in an enclosure, in an uh, um, aquarium type of enclosure that's lined with, um, it's old uh, coconut husk. So they have a bath that they can get into. Every once in a while, uh, a brown turtle will want to bathe. They sit and they soak. It just feels good to them. It gets stuff off of their skin. Um, they can't swim, but they do like a good soak. Well, when Sugar climbed out of her 
soaking this morning. She left this behind. Look at that. It's an egg. She laid us an egg today. Now, for the past couple of years, I don't know if she did this regularly before, but last year and the year before, I don't know that she did as much last year as she did the year before that. She was laying one every couple of days for a little while. This is the first one that I've seen this year, though. So what would we do with this? I'm probably going to set it aside and, and try and just figure out where we'll, how we'll dispose of it, unfortunately. Um, turtle eggs are very, very hard to, to um, rear in captive. Um, when a turtle lays her eggs, she digs, she'll, she'll dig a hole in the ground. I'm sure everyone has seen video of uh, like sea turtles. What they do is they dig a hole. And um, she uses these powerful, powerful back legs to dig that out. See those legs? She'll get in there and like I said before, she gets in and she digs. And then she lays her eggs into the hole before covering it back up. So what happens is those eggs land in a very specific way. And right away, things start to settle, and we have to keep those eggs in that exact manner. So if it's landing with the, the part that's landing face up, needs to stay that way. So if we move them, and, and since she doesn't really have a place to bury hers, if she happens to kick it and it rolls, it makes it infertile right away. It makes it to where, you know, the egg doesn't, you can't do anything. Um, I don't know. I don't, so um, we need to be very, very, very careful. And then besides that, they need to be the right temperature all the time. They need to be the right moisture level. So they, it takes a lot of care to take care of those. So if she lays them, um, a lot of times what they'll actually do is either, um, you know, smash them by accident. And I think sometimes, and I may be wrong on this, um, uh, Stacy or Diane may have uh, an, a better answer for that, but I think they may even eat them because that, that actually gives them a little uh, protein as well. It seems weird to eat your own eggs, but that's nature. Look at her, isn't she gorgeous? So a couple other fun facts about these guys. Um, since they are very prevalent in the, in the Eastern United States, they actually are also the state animal in a couple places. Um, North Carolina and Tennessee specifically, hold box turtles, eastern box turtles, as their state animal. I thought that was really neat to find out. She's a cutie. Look at her. Isn't she great? All right. So if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to do my best to answer those for you. All right, Robert. Um, I think you answered this, but if you want to just um, do a repeat, um, they wanted to know how big these turtles can get. How big can they get? Typically, they get to be about um, in the wild. They're, they don't get very big. They're kind of they're smaller in the wild. In the wild, they may get to be four and a half, five inches um, across, you know, from from tip to tail. Um, they don't get all that. Their shell size, anyway. Their shells don't get that big. Um, if you've been to our visitor center and you've seen Ray, I believe that's more of a typical size that they get in the wild. I've seen them good size though, but you know, they don't live as long. It takes a long time for them to mature for one thing. It takes a lot, that means it takes a long time for them to become grown up. Um, so, you know, given the, 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 whether they have that, that chance to, um, get old enough to get big it really uh, plays a large role in their size. Um, in captivity, they can get bigger six, seven inches from um, front to back. Excellent. I think that was the only question, although one of the things I love about box turtles, which I think is super cool, is that box turtles can live to be over a hundred years old. And, and when I talk about size, they continue to grow their whole life, but they don't grow as much when they get older. Some years they might grow a lot, some years they might hardly grow at all. So. They're very, very cool, and they can live, like I said, a really, really long time. All righty. Any other questions yes, in the chat? That was one of the... Go ahead, Robert. Oh, that was one of the things I was going to point out as well, is that they can get to be very, very old, especially in captivity. Um, they can live, you know, a century. So that, that's a really, really neat thing. When, they're, when they have the right conditions, 
when they can live well, when things aren't after them, they can live to be a really, really long time, just like other turtles can. Very cool. All righty. So let's see everybody who's on. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today? Everybody wave. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. We were a little smaller today, but that's okay. We got the information out late. Um, just a couple of um, sort of housekeeping things. Um, we've set the schedule now, so we're going to do these on Mondays and Fridays at one o'clock. And when you register today, you should only have to have registered one time today. Then you should be able to use that same login um, on Friday and for all of the others. Um, if that doesn't work, let me know, but I, but I think that should work for everybody. Um, oh, and right. Mr. wants to remind people that you shouldn't keep box turtles as pets. They don't do, a, they don't do very well as pets. Alrighty, excellent. Well, I hope everyone's doing well today. It's a beautiful day today, if you haven't noticed. So I encourage everybody to get outside, have some fun, run around a little bit. There's all kinds of stuff that's blooming and the leaves are starting to come out onto all the trees. Spring's such a really, really cool time. So, so spend some time outside um, and we look forward to seeing everybody again on Friday. Alrighty, excellent. Well, thank you all very, very much for being here and we will see you again on Friday. Hey guys.